Isn't it good? It's so soothing for us. It says we're now streaming. So welcome everybody to another wonderful week of uh, of Love City Live. Well, I'm saying it's going to be wonderful. I'm, that's a little presumptuous of me, right, Rosa? <laughs> no, no. Say it out loud. <laughs> yes. I'm assuming it's going to be good. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. I'm Andre in the Flow. We're joined this week by Rosa Vasquez of Collaborative Conscious. Um, more on her in a bit, but I want to give everyone an opportunity to come on in. I'm going to pull up our chat screen. Give us a shout and let us know who you are and where you're watching from. And then I'll let Rosa know. Uh, I'm going to pull this up so that I can see everything and have a full view. Looks like we've got one viewer, Rosa. One viewer. Okay. <laughs> Go in. <laughs> so lucky number one. Lucky number one. So what are we doing here? We're, 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 <laughs> this is Love City Live, The Good Report. It's a space where every Wednesday, the people in Love City Art specifically, hey, David Kwong Pham, who gave us a shout, hey. one of my buddies from the Metamorphosis Project and a Love City fave. <laughs> um, we wanted a space where we could gather once a week um, to circle the wagons around our tribe, around our crowd. The people in Love City Arts um, are really, really special. Um, and I wanted to figure out a way to connect with them while also showcasing all of my cool friends. <laughs> and so tonight's cool friend is Rosa Vasquez. Sometimes we have two cool friends on here and sometimes we have three and sometimes we have one and sometimes it's just me talking. But I want to invite everyone to come in and gather around the well and take a breath. We're going to be here for about the next hour or so and some change unless... Um, Rosa and I start breaking into a few of our college stories. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't even go to college together, but, <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure there's some overlap in there somewhere. I've got fuzz for people who are going to be listening to this in the podcast. By the way, this is a live podcast taping episode six of 52 weeks of episodes where I want to connect with people like Rosa and Awesome Lights in our community. 52 weeks. Um, this is only number six. <laughs> so we're just getting started. Mm -hmm. But it feels good. I mean, you've, you've stopped by before and hung out with us. How do, yeah. you, feel, how do you feel about this, this love vibe of connecting people and, and bringing oh, people together? I know, together? like... When I do come in and I catch a bit of it, it's just so much energy just coming out of the screen already. You know, you can feel the love and the people you bring in. So that's great to always have. So I love that you and your guests are bringing that out. Even if it's just for five minutes, a minute, or you stay for the whole thing, you know, mm -hmm. it's there. You always catch a love up. Okay, so let's let's breathe together um, this week to anchor our energy and kind of align ourselves. Um, and then we're going to sync up. I invite all of the three watchers and let us know who you are. If you're watching on Facebook right now, there's like three Facebook channels going, a couple of YouTubes, and then Twitch um, Periscope. Yeah, that Periscope's on Twitter. So if you're sending us love, I can see that three people are currently watching on all of those different platforms. If you're hanging out for just a moment, then we bless your quest too. See, we just lost two viewers. It's cool. We're still going <laughs> to breathe together because... What we came for is a meeting of minds that are anchored in matters of the heart and a meeting of the mind of people who want to be the change that they wish to see in the world. And so we're just going to hang out here for a second for just a moment. And I know that there's a huge vice presidential debate going on right now. <laughs> and a lot of mud is about to get thrown um, potentially in the next hour and a half that they're on. But we're going to offer something a little bit differently over here on this channel. And what's wonderful about life is that um, there's a lot of things to choose from. Um, sometimes you want pizza. I went for the, all the bad things first. <laughs> That's good. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you want the pizza. Sometimes you want the chicken. Sometimes you want the salad. 
Sometimes you want the vice presidential debate. Sometimes you just want to breathe with friends. And tonight I was anticipating, well, this morning I was anticipating tonight and I was like, oh man, that's going to be horrible for ratings. No one's going to potentially show up, you know, if there's a vice presidential, you know, uh, <laughs> and spirit immediately said to me, Rosa, like, would you chill the fuck out? Mm. Because the people yeah. that are meant to be in the space watching the, the vice presidential debate will be there. And the people that are meant to trot through the little, you know, briar patch and hang out with you and Rosa will be there too. And then there's the replays and then there's the uh, the podcast and all of these ways um, that people will eventually be able to connect. So it's chill. It's really, really chill. So we're going to take a moment to anchor ourselves in this space as a community. We gather to hold space equally for what's good in the world. I know there's been a lot of disappointing news. I know there's been a lot of anxiety. I know there's been a lot of stress. And I invite you now to take a breath. Now, I know that Rosa is supposed to be on the episode and she's having a technical difficulty and she's fallen off. She'll be back. But I just want to invite you now in the place that we're going to be here every Wednesday regardless, but in the space and in the place of all of that angst that's over on the vice presidential debate, I want to bring a different kind of vibe, a little bit of love, a little bit of light. Um, like I said, we gather every Wednesday. Uh, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. We don't. Sometimes our guests have flawless technology, and sometimes they fall off like Rosa has done. But she'll be back. Let's pull ourselves into 11 minutes past the top of the hour. Nowhere to be, nowhere to go not running from anything and not running towards anything just allowing our love to be all there is in this moment and like I said you can stop by for two minutes you can stop by for 20 minutes you can listen to this later in the podcast it's chill it's chill but we don't always want to be in doom and gloom we can't be in doom and gloom for the rest of our lives. David Kwong Pham says, let's forget about the vice of life. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of mess going on right now. I know that if you're if you're watching the same television that I'm watching or, um, you know, or subject to the same, you know, I always talk about the, these metal, these metal and glass devices that are kind of pushing and pulling us around in life. If if that's happening to you the way that it's happening to me. And hopefully Rosa, when she returns, if 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 that's what's going on, um, I invite you to just take a breath right now. We breathe because life is scary. We breathe because life can be hard. We breathe because life is unpredictable. We breathe because life is unpredictable. I'm going to reach over for my angel card so I can pull one um, until Rosa comes back or if I hear from her through the internet. Um, I'm going to pick an angel card and read one and then that will guide our time together. Friends. I'm a woo woo person. For those of you who don't know, I'm a woo woo person. So I don't mind just kind of being still while we have a bit of a, of a, of a technical situation, I guess I'm going to grab a card.
All right, David Kwong Pham is still with us, it looks like. It looks like a couple other people have come in. Thank you for watching us on YouTube and Facebook. I think I'm on my personal Facebook page and also on the Love City Arts one. All right, so someone tell me in the chat when to actually stop and that will be the card that's on top i'm shuffling my angel card deck nothing too woo woo for you superstitious people they're the ori original angel cards by kathy tyler and joy drake if you've been around and watching the youtube channel and been listening to the podcast you know i pull these cards out all the time when we need some extra magic here at our gathering david kwong Fong, tell me how your week is and then also tell me when to stop shuffling. So let us know who you are and where you're watching from and what energy you're bringing tonight. What's happening, people? If y'all don't tell me when to stop shuffling, I guess I'll stop on my own. All right. This was, I did not see it. Ooh. Very interesting card. Love City fam that's popping through. Be sure to let me know in the chat how you're doing. I'm going to see some of you tomorrow at um, Won't You Be My Neighbor and in the weekend's programming. But okay, he said it's galactic. I love it. All right, so I did stop. And let's see here. The word I picked is very weird. It's not like a feel-good word of the night. It's a really strange one. Tonight's word is efficiency. Can y'all see that? Is that in focus? It's probably not in focus. Efficiency. All right, so let's see what the angels want to say to us tonight about efficiency. Once again, the Good Report and Love City Live is not a um, belief-heavy space. I don't care about the salvation of your soul. Um, I don't care about whether you're going to burn in hell or not. I don't care if you're going to go to heaven. I don't care if all dogs go to heaven. I don't care. Um, it's just a spot for us to be together in a very intentional way. So much of what's in social media world and in the internet is pushing and pulling us to and from things that we may or may not want to go towards. Um, sometimes in life, it's the boss or the partner or the girlfriend or the boyfriend or you know, fuck buddy, um, pushing and pulling us in all different directions. And so we gather on um, Wednesday nights to just be together for something positive, expansive, and apparently, according to our angels tonight, efficient. <laughs> then after I read this card, I'll check on our guest to make sure that her house didn't blow up wherever she is. Okay. So the angels are telling us um, that the word of the night and the word for this episode is efficiency. Wise use of energy, resources, and time. That's what efficiency is. Wise use of energy, resources, and time. It may not be the shortest route from point to point, but the most inclusive and effective. Efficiency, a wise use of energy, resources, and time. It may not be the shortest route from point to point, but the most inclusive and effective. All right, I have no clue what that card means for tonight beyond it telling us to use the energy wisely and use the resources wisely and use the time wisely. And see, I use the energy wisely. I use the time wisely. And here comes back Rosa, just in the nick of time. What do y'all think about the word that, we're, that, we, that we picked tonight? I don't pick the words, the angels pick the words. The word we picked while you were um, in, the, in the matrix was- Efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> and check this out. And the, and the card, the little, you know, oh. you know there, there's an explanation. The, the explanation that accompany, accompanies it says, wise use of energy, resources, and time. It may not be the shortest route from point to point, 
but it's the most inclusive. And if I get what this card means now, like we had to include you in this discussion. So for efficiency's sake, we just had to kind of be with the energy, mm -hmm. use it wisely, allow the resources like your computer or whatever blew up over there. Um, My phone blew up on me. <laughs> it was the phone that blew up. Yeah, like it blacks out when it gets overheated. It just shuts down completely. Oh my God. Efficiency. Hopefully Efic this other device doesn't blow up. <laughs> Listen, it's cool. We were just chilling in the space. Um, David calls it angelic probability. That's another thing I love about having these live, these live <laughs> tapings is that we get to hear from everyone. He's saying that there's an angelic probability. I'm putting words in his mouth that there's an angelic probability um, that there's a reason why your phone blew up, I guess. <laughs> so stop using that damn phone. <laughs> it's Folks, cool. Gotta do phones. It's cool. We're oh my God, but that card is so unusual. Oh my God. It's it so, is. It is. That card usually, is like. Of all the things in here, I usually pick, you know, I did 70 days in a row of this show at the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> and um, there's purpose and release and resilience and like forgiveness. There's like all of these heavy words in here. And then the ancestors shut off your whole device and then made me pivot and pull the word efficiency. Mm -hmm. Which makes me think of like um, washing machines. Yeah. But not so it much about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, once again, thank you everybody that's tuning in right now and watching and contributing to the conversation. I'm here with Rosa Vasquez. This is a live taping of, oh, what show am I doing right now? I'm doing Love City Live and I'm doing The Good Report. There's so many in our ecosystem, as you know, Rosa, sometimes I just blank out and just forget where the fuck I am. <laughs> you got a lot, you got a lot. You got a well, lot of, uh, you know, holes in the fire. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, so do you. What, what's yes. going on for you? Like, how? What's been happening since the last time we spoke? And we've spoken on camera, and we've spoken on, off camera, like on phone calls. And I've never met you in person. You're one of my COVID mm -hmm. finds. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've, I don't think we've ever hugged. Right? Yeah, we haven't yet. Jesus. That's because. wild. Whole ass relationships. But I feel like like <laughs> we, we connect all the time. But mm -hmm. since I've spoken to you last, what's going on in your world? Um, so throughout the summer I kinda like after Memorial Day, I kinda chilled out and like kind of decided to eliminate um some projects I had going on and also potential obstacles to like focus on important you know, one thing at a time. Because mm -hmm. I knew like after summer was over, you know, I'm an educator and then I have two little ones as well. Like this was so up in the air at the moment, like what the hell's going to happen? Like the schools had made no decision at this point. So, you know, I knew like I needed to really kind of sit down and really decide for myself and not wait to see mm -hmm. what, you know, the DOE or whatever they say, you know, the powers that be say. So, you know, now I'm just at home with my kids and kind of feel like I'm a teacher again. I'm a parent, um, a mediator, so like <laughs> a dean, like all those things. I was like, does it feel? So, you know, does it feel like it's right where you're supposed to be, or does it feel odd still because it's new? I would say, um, so far it's been three weeks, and the first week was like, what the hell is happening? You know, like I guess it was one of those points that I was like, is it me or is it like? something else going on and then just talking with people close to me I'm really just kind of grounding myself and believing in my power I said you know I'm sort of like in charge of my family and myself and I have the power to really go back to bases and take care of my children so I decided I think as time was going by you know it gets easier and I think that's something parents are going through now especially those that decided to do remote learning and those that are also teachers as well you know like time it takes patience and i think with that you're also learning different ways you know you just can't use what we did indoors or in the system at home so it's finding ways that's going to work for your family you know work for yourself as well too and your kids i think it's really helped me to be aware that's like a big one really observe my kids 
like their learning style and also who I, you know especially myself mm-hmm. do you do you think that parents even have the space in this climate to slow down and figure out what they're i mean you're you're blessed in the chaos because you're able to kind of you know specifically cater to your children and your trained educator what do you say to the person that's out there kind of swinging from the flagpole you know um you know uh because they they don't really understand the nature of childhood development mm-hmm. yeah i think um, what, would, what would you tell them tell the parents mm-hmm you don't care yeah, about the parent. I think, you, don't, um, you, don't, you don't. You're not talking to the parent. You're like, <laughs> you're like, you're like, I think. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I'm trying to focus on myself as a parent too, but no. no um, exactly. I think so, um, is one of those okay, things. So that can we can we pause there for a second? Because as, as I was asking the question, I was like, "How dare I ask Rosa?" to speak to every parent in America about, you know, how they should homeschool or remote teach their child. But I'm sure like you're just doing the best you can in the framework of the conditions of your life, as is everybody else, right? Yeah, for sure I am. And I think everyone has a different environment they have to deal with and also different situations they have to deal with as well and finding what works for them. And I think it's not beating themselves up about it or be like, okay, this parent is doing it one way, you know, that's good for them, you know, and you know, everyone's got to find what works for themselves because the parent is the best teacher for every, you know, their own children. Mm-hmm. What are, and I think parents need to realize that. I feel a, we depended too much on the department of education too much for taking care of our kids. I'm going to put you on the spot and put any parents that are listening now or watching now on the spot. Um, what are the top three things in COVID that your children have taught you? Mm-hmm. For myself, oh my God, I know for me, it's definitely more of observation and seeing how they learn, mm-hmm. seeing how they are as an individual because when they're going to school or when they want to go to school, you know, they have their own personality. You know, I don't really own them. You know, like my children are going to be their own individuals. That's just my mantra of the things when it comes to parenthood. And Mm -hmm. it's being aware of like and observing who they are as little people, you know, (laughs) as they how they are. And also just being um, aware of myself, you know, like when I'm getting upset, how to, you know, come back to center and also being aware of when it's also too much, you know, like the school's not with me, the teacher's not with me. So when it's too much, I put it to the side, like, okay, this will come later, you know? my own personal well-being and my kids well-being comes first when you say put it to the side like what does that look like in real time are you like tossing a chromebook out the window are you (laughs) no like i'm just uh, i'm taking the worksheets that i print out putting it in a folder to the side and then the next day we get back to it kind of thing you know which is prioritizing quality time over the need to check a box yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm noticing that like with the schools, like it's like attendance has to constantly be there, you know, and you know, they have to be sure that the kids are there, you know, and sometimes they want the children to be visible so much and I don't feel comfortable sharing my sacred space camera all the time, every, you know, six to eight hours a day on, you know, especially my kids. So as soon as they see their face, I mute it. I shut the video and if they want to see them again to participate, I put it back on. You know, people got to respect and, you know, hold on to that space that's their home. I didn't even think about that from like, I love you, Rosa, by the way, because you are on that woo-woo shit too. (laughs) And I had never thought about the fact that, (laughs) you know, a a, a lot of people don't, oh my goodness, I don't even have kids, so I've never and I certainly don't have school age children. So I never would have even um, thought about this. A teacher is now in your living room. And sometimes to people that have multiple children, they now have multiple teachers mm-hmm. in their living room. And even if you are a, um, a uh, exemplary parent, you may not want people in your safe space like that. 
for hours of the day. And I, I always, you know, I think a lot about the teachers that kind of have to teach and kind of corral the class. I have a lot of sympathy um, and empathy for them. Um, but then you start thinking about like the fact that now they are now in people's houses and that whole dynamic that you have to navigate. I never considered um, what that looks like. And then the lengths that you have to go through in order to maintain that boundary, because you have to be able to mute. You have small children, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, five and a four-year-old. Yeah. So yeah. So you're you're you got to be on mute duty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can't. I mean, I see some of the other parents, and they have you know, they leave their kids on doing it, and you know that my kids are too young to even sit down and do their own work. You know, I'm with them, and if the teacher goes on there and explains it, it's sort of still that you know, still not checking in, right? You know, every child learns differently, and. Right. Pre-K kids and, and kindergarten kids sitting in front of a screen all those hours is just not ideal. They're not going to learn it that way. How do you think this is going to affect like this generation of kids? Do you think they'll be majorly impacted or will they be? Re- I mean, look, we're all resilient here. So no one send me any like crazy DMs about, you know, or, or like emails about, you know, you know, oh, Andre said that they're like that the kids are going to be like ruined or something like that. I'm not saying that we're going to be okay in the end but Mm -hmm. none of us had to learn our abcs you know or our basic well i'm old enough to have fucked with cursive (laughs) yeah (laughs) you remember those days of cursive writing (laughs) uh give me a shout out or send me a message later if you're listening to the podcast if you know what the fuck cursive writing is (laughs) and and the, the you know the paper that had the pink line at the top, but then there were like blue lines, yeah. dots and dashes. Do the kids even still use dots and dashes paper? The yeah, they, they, still, they still have it, but now it's through the computer and, you know, in their workbooks, they have it. You know, some some composition notebooks have it. But kids aren't writing in cursive the way no our more, fancy yeah. ass is dead. No more? Yeah. No more cursive. Mm-mm. All right, well. Long live cursive. Give us a shout in the comments. <laughs> um, I see you watching in Facebook. Let's see, we're on Twitter and Periscope, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube right now. Oh, we're also on Discord. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we're, we're sharing all of even even Geeks Unite. We're here for you tonight. I'm joined yeah. by it. Well, actually, coincidentally, one of my favorite geeks in the yard, um, Rosa Vasquez, leader of Collaborative Conscious. Um, and part of your programming that you in the community is anime conventions and anime meetups. So, do you like to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, sure. So no, we didn't we didn't plan on doing that tonight, but <laughs> no. you know, I didn't I didn't know we were on Discord, and that's where the geeks you know hang out, and that's where we hang yes. out. So why not tell us about the yeah. anime? And <laughs> yes, who's, sure. and who's your favorite anime character? Mm, okay, so I have a local community and you know, group that's called ACG Culture Social Mixers. So it stands for Anime, Comic, and Game Culture Social Mixers. So it's a local and small space, online and offline, where those who are fans, enthusiasts, creatives, artists, merchants, cosplayers of those genres could come together and just generate leads and, you know, collaborate together as well. Because sometimes those spaces are so wide and sometimes they're very quick also. Because when you go to conventions, you can't really get to know somebody and if you want to do a project together as well as artists or creatives it's kind of next to impossible and you know and, and find out who in your local community is in this kind of genre as well because I grew up loving those three genres and you know I it was sort of like one of those things growing up like I don't talk about it it's in the closet I'm not gonna mention that I play that game especially as a girl like gamer girls growing up it was no such thing you know they saw it as weird and can mm-hmm. you talk to me about being a gamer girl um, in the closet, as it were? Yeah, I feel like, like... I, I believe everybody has closets. No matter whether you're straight, by gay, like whatever your uh, whatever your orientation, I believe everybody has a closet. And you said yours was the anime gaming girl, right. girl gaming yeah. anime closet. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, because as in that genre, it was mostly like male dominated. You know, boys played games, boys watched read comics, they did anime, so girls weren't even really involved in that as well. They saw it as like, you know, why, what are you doing here? You should you know, be doing the so-called, you know, girly stuff in a way. Then, mm-hmm. you know, then when I 
finally realized that there was other people in my local area that are also creatives and a part of this, you know, it really helped to, you know, nowadays it's everywhere. So mm-hmm. no way and kind of like, oh, I can't talk about this, you know, and I grew up in New York City, grew up in the Bronx and it was sort of like, do I talk about this? Cause I got to keep a tough interior, you know, and like, well, you know, g- gaming and anime made you weak. It was sort of like, you know, they started as like geeky, nerdy, like. And geek made you weak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they mm-hmm. seen it like, like that and sort of like not cool kind of vibes, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. So I think now is it's a different kind of impression. It does. And it's so positive now. And so, you know, and I seen it with my students growing up and how like it's all in their lifestyle. You know, they grew up with that stuff. And if that's a part of their lifestyle as well, you know, it's so different. So you know, growing up in the Bronx, I didn't see, I didn't know many gamers or anime comic fans as well. And then now, since I'm still a fan of it and creative in the hobby as well, you know, I wanted to create these spaces that are local and you can meet someone in your local area as well doing that. So I do social mixers and I was doing them, you know, in New York City, a couple of them. And then I started doing it virtually over the summer. I did a summer series so show and tell summer series where i had a list of various cosplayers anime comic creators even those who did merchandise or clothing apparel in those Mm -hmm. genres as well and Mm -hmm. give them a spotlight to promote themselves show something about themselves and you know give them a voice to speak about you know what they do and ways to collaborate and you know it's been a fun interesting experience and hopefully you know i get the chance to do it again sometime at the end of this year you you totally will. You totally will. I mean, has the digital space been good for you? I mean, are people wanting to, is that, well, you said that's where it was happening. Um, It happened first, like locally, like in, I had it two in the Bronx, one in Manhattan. And, you know, it, it was started all like meeting people through social media. And mm-hmm. then once COVID hit, I was supposed to do it before COVID. I was supposed to do another event locally, but then COVID hit. So then when I decided, let me do the summer series virtually and, it's been great, you know, like been meeting so many other artists and, you know, those people in the genre and cosplayers from across, like not even locally, from across the country, across wow. the world. And it's been great to like, for them, like one thing they love is that they love that they could just share their voice, share their creativity, because there's no conventions. They might stay for the next year or two. So it's been, you know, a great space for them just to share their creativity and you know what's going on with them some of them even talk about mental health like a lot of them that i had because i also do themed events and conversations Mm -hmm. so it's not just like show and tell like what they're wearing it's more of like they have real based conversations you know so they'll talk about mental health they'll talk about um discrimination racism you know women's rights you know so it goes a lot of different topics wait 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 rosa wait 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 like (laughs) This isn't an ordinary show and tell. This is something different, you know? Uh, and, then, and then the first thing you lead out the gate with was mental health. And then you came behind it with discrimination. So this is like a show and tell that's like super, super like um, good for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's because uh, I tell people that, you know, hey, Stacia. they can feel comfortable sharing their space and, you know, share what they want to talk about, you know. I love something it. that they want to speak about. Stacia says anime is what brings them together. Um, I don't get the anime crowd. What What do you think it is? <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, uh, Rosa, about, or well, Stacia too. What is it about the anime crowd that is so... There's so many kinds. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, I'm more of like 90s retro, you know, and, and early 2000s kind of anime vibes. Like, I, like you said, my, I guess my favorite animes were like Cowboy Bebop, you know, very jazzy space, you know, kind of stuff. Um, mm. And, you know, those, those 90 ones. And then now there's some new ones that are so different. You know, there's just so many different types of fans and genres as well, just like movies, you know, so is really you know now the young kids i try to understand what they're watching and you know i look at it just to be understanding it and some of it is like i don't know if i can get in that as well you know some of it's kind of left field you saying the anime has also evolved the anime yeah i think changed? so especially yeah like i think just like gaming and comics have evolved it's become very mainstream and it's become very more involved in western culture as well because you know it's was something that was very just okay it's going to stay in the east eastern hemisphere in japan mm-hmm. and in those um 
Asian countries. But, you know, since then, maybe I was saying in the past 20 years, it's been such a mainstream thing that at least maybe one out of five or maybe one out of 10 friends definitely know seeing one anime or one movie related to anime. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I have no entry point into that world. I, 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 I tried and I could not take. I think that it's the cartoon connection for me. It's like, I'm like, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm too adult for cartoons. I, I'm not yeah. going to watch cartoons. I, I, I outgrew cartoons when I'm like, and so that is kind of a hang up. That's the me. thing. I think it's a very, um, the Western way of like uh, the way cartoons were in America, you know, very like the, you know, Warner Brothers and kind of goofy and funny like that. But a lot of animes go to that other side of like real life dramas and like life they stories. It's super, like, it's oh, super meta. They say it's super meta and it's like, like, you know, pills and potions and shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, depending on what you like, what's your, you know, what kind of anime you like or what's your taste, what's your preference. Okay. You know, so, there. Do you think you do you think that you could and perhaps um some of the viewers prescribe for me what kind of anime I might be into like right now? Hmm. Or is it deeper than that? Or there's so many different types, it's not that there deep. are so many different types, you know? Cause because you and also there's people that you would think they might be into one anime type, but then secretly find out they love, I don't know, like this school is- girl animes or something, you know, like, oh I would never think that. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. So I'll have to have you back sometime soon to talk like a whole episode <laughs> about anime. Or maybe we'll do like a Love City anime crossover pop-up kind of situation mm-hmm. so that y'all can like geek out about it and, and school me on which uh, anime house <laughs> which I'll be in. Anyway, we're chatting tonight with Rosa Vasquez of Collaborative Conscious, um, a community leader and such a giver, like always in uh, the Instagram stories, Instagram wall, um, promoting and creating opportunities. Speaking of which, you're going to be speaking like within the week, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to be? Where can people um, check out this or, you know, what's your presentation all about? So it's about one of the services I provide through Collaborative Conscious, because Collaborative Conscious is my whole umbrella to all my other sub things, which the anime comic gaming was one of the sub things. So the it's the sharedtalent.org, that's the name of the company. Mm. And they're doing an education and advocacy conference. And it's gonna be streaming registration is in my bio and Instagram, but it's gonna be streaming starting this Sunday. And it's going to be streaming, I believe, for like one whole week if you register. And I believe next Thursday they're going to have a Q&A with myself and all the 20 plus presenters who are presenting from education, from family, from, you know, any type of talent that in regards to how we could save ourselves. That's the hashtag that the founder of Share Talent uses, hashtag save ourselves, of like how it takes us and our own communities and our own educators and people of color and women, you know, and men of color to like really just stand up and take back education, take back, you know, our voices in the education field. What does taking back the education look like for you? I think for me, it's about bringing back the, you know, the whole thing of what my workshop would be about, which is building bridges. And um, it takes a, takes a village or a modern day version of it takes a village. Mm-hmm. And it's about, I'll be talking about my school family community partnership pubs and how I believe in school family and community should join together and collaborate and share resources and bring that awareness and autonomy to each other just to provide self-sufficiency and sustainability, you know, for our children, for the future. Are you believing that this is something that can happen outside of uh, white people? How, uh, I think. How- how do white people integrate into this given that I, I, well, let me speak for myself. I feel like they personally have so much work to do around healing all of this. And so that's why I love your concept of saving ourselves because that's something that black and brown can kind of do in their communities. And then I mean, I, I, how does this gel for you? Or did I, or did I go way to Malcolm X? <laughs> no, no, it's great. I think um, so Lashana Harris, who's the founder of Share Talent, when she created that hashtag 
Um, it really resonated with me with my philosophy when it comes to collaborative conscious as a whole of bringing back a modern day version of it takes a village. And I feel as um, people of color, we need to find those villages again. I feel like we've lost that with government dependency from, you know, the war on drugs in the eighties and, you know, I don't want to go political of like, okay, no, depend please, on. Please go. <laughs> I, I just I read today on Twitter someone said like I'm black I don't have the luxury of not being political what do you mean like you don't want to go political Rosa you don't have the fucking luck your brown ass don't have the luxury of not being political on a Wednesday night all oh, right <laughs> like you, you're just not gonna be political with the because... press with the vice presidential debate going on. <laughs> you better be political for the for the salvation of us how are you, how are you gonna say save ourselves has deep resonance and then the next in the next breath go. I just don't want to be political. <laughs> like, no, I feel, um, you yeah. know, like uh, people always feel like I think it was for me growing up mm -hmm. in the Bronx. It was like that dependency on either Republican or Democrat. And my yes. thing is just with my personal preference. It was like, you know, both sides, you know, they'll do what they want to do and to get the vote and then move on, move along, you know, and it's just saying that's beautiful. The, you know, the community stay the same. And so I feel like there's really, you know, resources are being put in the wrong places, in the wrong spaces as well. And growing up, you know, seeing that lack of nurturing in not only our nutrition, our mental health growing up in those communities, also, you know, after school programs and also even going into, you know, a job or some sort of long term career, you know, we didn't have those things while, you know, communities of, you know, white, you know, white communities had that, you know, they had that ability over the years to develop that well we didn't so that's why i feel with the school family community partnership hubs i want to bring back that you know the idea that we could you know be self-sufficient we could depend on one another not to feel like oh you're going to take from my plate and you know i'm like why should we collaborate kind of thing because people still have that stigma with collaboration you know can we stop there for a second and talk about that mm -hmm. um, because <laughs> You gonna take from my plate? You gonna, <laughs> is that is that the is that is that the colloquialism? I know what it means, but do people say that? Is that like a thing that people say? Is that a thing that people like y'all sound off in the comments or message me if you hear this in the podcast later in the week? Um, is that something that people like feel like you're gonna take away from my plate? Okay, right. Like if they. I think they probably say it differently now. You know, I'm so old school. <laughs> I have oh, so many <laughs> metaphors, but um, yeah, I feel. Yeah, you, you, you're saying that, like <laughs> you're like I'm, I'm like I'm not trying to date you. Cause I think we're probably like like very close to age. Um, so yeah, I get what it means. I mean, I just don't understand why um people would even. You know, I mean, I understand why it happens and I cannot pretend like I'd, I've not had those thoughts or, the, or you know, or, or like been in that place too. I'm trying to figure out how I don't want anybody to take from my plate and I don't want to take from anybody else's plate. I don't see how that's going to get us into the future we actually want. That's what I'm saying. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. I think with, um, with the, the whole idea of a collaboration, you know, it's especially when it comes to, you know, people feel like, the, you know, wherever, how, how far they succeed on the ladder of what society sees as success, you know, they feel like I work for this or, you know, do I need to collaborate with somebody else to, you know, to assist them, to help them? Should I, you know, depend on them, whatnot? And I think with collaboration, you know, it could be so beneficial in many ways, you know, and if it's in the right formula, you know, we always feel like it's just give, you know, give, 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 and no one's kind of giving back in mm -hmm. a way. Mm -hmm. David Kwong, uh, David Kwong Pham is saying collaboration in musical theater writing is complex. Respect, he says with capital R-E-S-P-E-C-T is the tether to this collaborative relationship and respect is fluid dynamics. Go off in the comment section about how respect is fluid dynamics. Um, uh, oh, I don't even know where to even begin. I mean, where, where do you think we could stand to find more, more respect in our collaborations in, in 2020, even digitally Rosa? 
I think it's knowing that we have a voice, you know, wherever we go, where, you know, wherever we decide to sit down on, whatever table we decide to sit down on, or whatever community we decide to go to and build, that we know our voice is heard there, you know, that we have actions that are being done as well. Because sometimes, you know, we could be saying things, be saying the same problems for years to come, but nothing's kind of being done. But if we feel that we have that power and sort of that, ownership to be able to do those collaborations you know it brings so much um awareness to ourselves and you know sort of autonomy you know that's just that independence of okay i'm giving some kind of value to this collaboration building this mm -hmm. as you know hence but my workshops about building those bridges you know which i felt was one of the obstacles i myself when i was doing the school founded community partnership hubs mm -hmm. you know in certain communities you know, there was those building bridges, you know, obstacles, because you have some communities out there that don't want to, you know, kind of shake rock the boat or feel like, you know, like, why should we depend on, you know, why should we, what resources are we going to get from one another kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, what's in it for us? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Um, Stacia's down here in the comments. Let me pull them up. Uh, Stacia says, yes, uh, people really feel scarcity, consciousness, uh, because it's fed to us to create divisiveness. Um, let's share our food. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Yeah, scarcity, consciousness. Well, I haven't heard that in a while. That's so true. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's so true because it's like when you grow up, like I grew up in the Bronx, you know, public sister's parent and, you know, things were scarce, you know, not only physically, but mentally as well, you know, draining, like, do I have the ability to go on to next week or to next month kind of thing? And, you know, even if there's something in front of me, you know, I know someone that has that abundance as far as conscious level, they'll go after it, you know? And I feel we have to kind of build that within our, you know, conscious communities, you know, within those, in our local communities to believe in that ability, that power that they have, that they could do it, you know, it's mm -hmm. possible. Just so hard when things are kind of fed to you, especially well now with social media, just what's fed to you through social media and even media as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to, um, I'm going to blog about this, um, I think tonight, um, I think it's next up in the queue. Um, but in it, I talk about how we're so impressionable. We're like, we're like, like in the face of the social media. Um, I watched a 20 second TikTok of a guy saying, if you wear your fanny pack on your waist, you're lame. If you wear your fanny pack on your chest, you're cool. And just kept looping, looping, looping. And I like laughed about it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I went to put on my fanny pack yesterday or day before yesterday. And he was in my head, this stranger. <laughs> and I was like, do I want to be lame and put mm -hmm. it on my, on my, on my waist? Or do I want to be cool and put it on my chest? And I was like, it's really wild how we, we can be sponges sometimes. Mm. And I think we really have to work and what you're speaking to and what I'm speaking to, we, we need to really be vigilant about what we're soaking up. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I wrote about because it's like, it doesn't matter where the fuck I wear my fanny pack. I need to wear it and just go get my groceries and like, you know, get my little odds and come on. Exactly. But like, but like the whole mental, the scarcity consciousness, where I wear my, um, uh, my fanny pack, um, how I sound, how I present, the fuzz on my head, did I brush my beard? Like all of these things contribute to a lot of suffering and unhappiness for us. And I love that, um, you know, the work that you're in in education um, and in community organizing is all about bringing us, you know, pulling us out of th that, 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 crazed mental state and putting our feet back on the ground um what do you think of the major um challenges right now since you are spe specifically involved in education what do you think is going on in the state education system in the new york city education system in the midst of covid and and if you could be superintendent for the day like what would you change immediately oh man <laughs> i'm like where do i begin okay <laughs> yes. i feel like it's <laughs> 
it's, it's gotta take a team or who knows like i always feel like you know i get shit for saying this like just demolish the whole thing and start from the ground up because jeez mm-hmm. yeah. you know it's it's never really worked for us, you know, and I mean us like, you know, people of color, like it's, it's been a very much system of, you know, go from job, you know, go from job A to job B, job, you know, it's always been like that. Never really kind of, you know, cause I worked in public school and private schools and seeing the difference in how, what is given into each of those systems and like what comes out of it. And with the public school system, it's just been a huge guinea pig, guinea pig test thing, you know, and I've never liked that about it. Like, it's just a whole, and now it's like that too. I feel like this is just a whole experiment phase going on now with COVID and the things you hear in the news of like, and like the way that gotta get tested and yeah like, and like there's like a red zone on the map now and an orange zone and a yellow zone and people have to like, you know, it's like, but these are lies. I, I don't understand. And I'm sorry, this is a huge like tangent, but I'm going to come back to you. Um, you know, so many countries have managed to get these things under control. So many local governments, so many major cities all over the world have managed to get this under control. Why do you think we're still playing etch a sketch every other mm-hmm. day on the news, Rosa? Like why, mm-hmm. why, why all the zones and um, the lack of care from the people in power including the education system yeah it's uh if i feel like you know if they wanted to test these things out like i would feel why use the education system you know like there's plenty of other you know op- you know avenues they could take instead of the public school system and the children that go there and you know also the educators the parents as well that go there because some you know like the system has become and that's what i was noticing when i was putting my kids in school and i was working there as well like they treated like a huge like sort of indoctrinated system like you come here this is what's going to be done and you're going to do it like this and you know you have to do everything that's kind of told yeah it's so industrial like an assembly line and i'm mm-hmm. one in my belief of like i need to get the hell off that line i can't be on an assembly line at all you know i can't deal with it you know and even if i try to my inner spirit will tell me Girl, get the hell off the line. Get Don't off even that be on. line. There's nope, nothing there's nothing out there that's good for you. Mm-hmm. I'm out on yeah. that out on that line. And so yeah, you're unplugging. Yeah, so it's yeah, definitely that. And I think now with COVID, this is a definite big awakening to everyone. I think if you aren't unplugged yet, I don't know why you're tethering on it, but get off it. And you know, it's it saves lives. Like, you know, we go back to that of like you know, go to speak to the real, you know, speak to educators, not the ones that they get from outside and, you know, they hire to come in to do the work that probably haven't been in education for, or to, you know, get the voice of, you know, every school district is different. Find out what's happening in your, they're just like with my resource hubs, when I do them, I always collect surveys in those local communities because what is needed in that community or school district is going to be different from another and i feel while they mentioned that i think i don't know if it's even accurate is even happening i'm gonna go grab a a drink of water um but tell people about your resource hubs and how you construct those in in the communities you serve and the question that i had down here was um what challenges are you seeing presently in the community um and by the time i get back i'll be i'll be back in time tell us about the hubs and then um, I want to hear about the challenges that you're seeing on the ground right now, because I really want Love City specifically to be on the front lines of how we can meet the direct needs of of the people that we encounter. Because um, mm-hmm. I, I believe that if we don't actually take up arms ourselves and actually care in that way, it's not going to get done. We can't be waiting for someone who's out here gasping for air you know, on the White, Ho- the White House lawn. We can't be waiting for that kind of motherfucker to do it for yep. us. Right? <laughs> exactly. so anyway, tell me about the hubs. I'm going to go grab some water. Go for it. Mm-hmm. My so, mic is your mic. Yeah. So the school family community partnership hubs, it's under the collaborative conscious umbrella. And we was said before, collaborative conscious is bringing back the modern day version of it takes a village. And my mission of that is to bring that back. And the vision is to find ways to collaborate and connect people through conversations and to create ideas that reshape our communities. So within that, as an educator and as a parent and also a community member, 
I came up with the idea of SFC partnerships hubs, which are stand for school family community partnership hubs. So the school family community partnership hub is a space that goes from school district to school district across the city and of course across the country eventually that we could share resources and it could be various resources not just from educators it could be from those in your local community and also parents as well to give back the power which is autonomy that independence of you know your voice is also you know you have something that you could give to this community to this resource hub because like i say parents know their children better they could they have a better way of educating their own children. I feel if schools are more involved in the community, they'll be able to understand what is it that, you know, benefits these children that live in those communities that they serve and schools that they're able to open up and say, you know, this is what we could offer and also what help we need from both the families and communities as well. So those hubs are very localized and within each school district. And it does take you know, many people from creatives. I've had a list of community centers. I've had creatives come and share their resources or what they do. And these are mostly free and low cost resources that I always aim for because a lot of the resource hubs and the partnership hubs are for those, um, you know, those communities and local communities that are in need of resources and what actions are being taken in those hubs, you know, in those, in those communities as well. So, you know, these hubs are just a starting point and where we could build from there and then how we could further, you know, nurture this seed, I call it, and kind of branch that out. I love it. I love to see it. I love to see it. And like, and so and it's growing, you know, it's growing. So it's, I, uh, well, <laughs> it's at its beginning. Like, of, of course it's growing. There's residents. Um, you're putting out good shit into the world. I mean, <laughs> what, what are like the top two things that you're seeing, people be affected by right now in COVID in, in the communities that you serve? Um, as far as that, um, I see definitely lack of information when it comes to COVID, when it comes to the, you know, the information that's coming out to us when it comes to testing, when it also comes to where can we get resources for our children? Where can we get resources within our own community? Because sometimes even people that live in a community they don't know that they could go to their local community board and volunteer or speak there as well and find out information. You know, also think about those um, communities that some of the family families are homeless shelters, some of those that are in foster care, you know, some of those that lack those resources. So I think about those especially and like how can we find spaces that could provide for them the information that they lack? Because right now with COVID, one of the things I noticed was that a lot of information was be given digitally. It was being given through virtual events. It was given through emails. And, you know, some of these families don't have access to that. So are they getting, you know, those families that don't have access to those things or communities that don't have access, are they getting that information or those resources? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what, what would be like one more thing in addition to improving communications and information, what would be one more thing that that you would see would be a direct need of the communities you serve? Oh, you broke up there. Say it again. Oh, so in addition, in addition to um, creating more opportunities for information um, and making sure that like there's more of a grassroots uh, communication strategy, mm -hmm. what would be like something else that people would need? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's um, knowing that there's, you know, information out there besides, you know, what's kind of we hear in the media, because I still feel like there are some individuals and some groups that feel like they can't kind of, you know, understand or they can't kind of lean on or trust the information that's being given by, let's say, you know, sometimes like, yeah, small entrepreneurs or even, you know, community creators such as myself and you that, you know, we want to do the footwork. We want to go out there and share the news. But, you know, very some people are very, you know, because of, like we said, the scarcity consciousness are very taken aback. Like, you know, that fear of like, why should I trust you? Why should I, you know, you're not like a major organization or the government. You know, they still have that fear, that mm -hmm. stigma yeah. of it, the label. So it's, you know, breaking down those barriers and just building that trust, you know, finding someone in that community that they know 
which was something that really benefited me growing up in District 15 in the Bronx was like being from that community and also working with those who lived in the community for like their whole life you know they have that trust person you know they have that person that they locally know that they could go to and so working with those people working with people who are you know you got um how they say like in the Spanish culture you got the abuelas that are out the window and they know everybody's business Mm -hmm. you know like Mm -hmm. get them you know they know what's going on you know get the people who are out in the you know that they hang out in the corner and they play dominoes or something like you know reach out to those people because you never know what they what information they know or maybe they might need as well i feel taking every bit of someone that's in the community and using them as a resource using them mm-hmm. you know them as an individual using their power door by door by door Mm-hmm. 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 all right so how can people connect with you and catch up with you for the next uh for for the next ways you're going to be giving love in the world how can people connect um so like you said i'll be doing the education advocacy conference that's being done and presented by sharetalent.org so appreciate them like you could register to that in their bio at sharetalent.org or you could go to my um bio at instagram on collaborative conscious so i'll have it there in my bio and register for the conference and you'll be able to see not only my workshop on building bridges, um, it takes a village and the school family community partnership hubs, like how to build that and how to bring that into your own communities. But there's 20 plus other, you know, wellness trainers, there are artists, there are dancers, there are educators, also parents who are sharing a little bit of, you know, of their knowledge to those in need. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody for tuning in and listening. I want to thank you, Rosa, for hanging out with us tonight at The Good Report. Yes, thank you. This this Uh, is fun. I love it. I love that I could just, you know, just chill chill out and like just let it out. Of course. Kind of like let my hair down and just do it. Of course. Give me the top three things that you're grateful for. Did you get Mm. the lot? Did you get that? I top three things i'm grateful for yeah and i, and I want to hear from um actually i want to take a breath i'm gonna take a little moment to actually bring the music up just a little bit um mm-hmm. and like i said i want to thank you rosa for being here and chilling out with us on a wednesday night and i just want to you know take the last five to seven minutes to just anchor in gratitude uh, with the community that you serve, Rosa, and also the community that that I serve. Um, There's just so many moving pieces. We talked about what it means to be a parent in the midst of this space. We talked about what it means to be an educator and a lecturer and facilitator in this space and community organizer. There's just so much going on. And I I know that it's very easy to be and to become overwhelmed with it all. And the reason why I started The Good Report and brought it into this Love City Live space is because I feel that one of the magic crayons and the box of crayons of life, if you will, is gratitude. There's something really, really special about this gift that we get to just pull ourselves in the time it takes to take a breath. We just pull ourselves into a, into a thank you. And so regardless of what your spiritual path is or what you believe, whether you call it spirit or shambalama or whatever it is for you, Um, we just want to pause for a moment to just offer specifically in this moment and intentionally in this moment, a giant thank you. Like I said, I want to thank Rosa again for being here and I want to thank you all for watching and listening, but more importantly, I just want to thank this breath. This breath. 
and for this day. And I want to invite uh, Nell Rosa to tell us what you're grateful for in the moment. And I want David, if he's willing to tell us what he's grateful for. Mm, yes. Uh, that was so good to say the breath because each day has been so thankful to be alive and you know with everything going on and with COVID hearing everything happening you know so I'm definitely grateful for just being alive each day that breath I'm thankful for just being present with my children just having that presence of being a mother for them has been so important for me especially now during this time just really anchoring down what it is to be a mother, you know, be, you know, believe in that power of being a mother. And I'm also thankful for those like you, Andre, and others who believe in, you know, collaborative conscious, because that's my own personal journey, collaborative conscious, and all the pieces that come together with it is what makes me who I am, you know, like, Collaborative conscious is me kind of unmasked, you could say, and also still growing and learning. So I'm grateful for all those who are seeing that unravel and happen. It's a beautiful thing. I'm grateful for you too, Rosa. Like, you know, we've met in COVID. Mm -hmm. And I think that through our series of public conversations and private conversations, we're finding that like, there's a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. like a lot of work to do um and it's so funny watching so much awakening that's so much so much awakening that used to happen yes yes and so much awakening that needs to happen and so much uh, caretaking of really really wounded people throughout the world mm -hmm. um and so that's why i'm not going to get caught in scarcity mindset or you know especially as a as a leader um in a creative community um you know and a and a human driven community <laughs> not a profit driven mm -hmm. community but a people driven community um we can't get caught up in all of the the nonsense and you know and the infighting and things like that because there's so much work to be done mm -hmm. um and i'm grateful that whenever i reach out to people like you there's a resonance. Um, there's a willingness and an energy of not for my sake, but for the sake of elevating light and love, positivity and goodwill on the planet. Um, I'm not sure mm -hmm. if the debate is still going or not, but I do know that for a significant um, amount of time of it, we held space for something else. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just really want to encourage everyone who's listening. And you know, I really want to encourage you to stop by lovesearts.org and check out the things we're doing. I got a giant web menu redesigned to do because there's like 52, 50, 11 things in the menu right now on the <laughs> website, but it's still workable. Um, and we're doing the best we can. So go and check out lovesearts.org if you want to register for any of our programs or get a reminder to pop back through. I want to invite people to subscribe to any of our channels wherever you're watching this tonight or give us a follow and just keep coming back. This is about as clear as it gets for me. I'm thinking this is number six of 52 because I'm going to do an episode a week for the whole year somehow. Um, and I think that this is the magic Rosa, it's it's for me, and and I, I think that sometimes people think that I, because I'm a showman, um, that I, you know, I'm a performer, darling. Um, people think that I have some kind of like angle, or that there's some like like you know, Soto's gonna pull back the curtain, and I'm gonna be like back there pulling levers, you know, the love city, because you talk about this distrust, you know, that right. we have to kind of work through in the communities we serve, and you no, know, there's no like, it's just simply me getting on on Wednesday nights because I believe that we deserve to have alternative spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and you're doing that, you know, especially like you said, there's the debate the going on and you are bringing that different energy that people need, you know, because sometimes 
it, it just bringing so much negativity out there. You know, we need something else in the space, in the world around us. Mm -hmm. what, what is your hope? Uh, I'll give you the last word. What is your hope for what's to come? Hello? Oh, I, get... I, I asked, <laughs> I, I, I was giving you the last. Ah! Oh, my weapon. Did we get cut off again? I was giving you the last word. I was like, I was like, what is your hope for what's to come? And then you went, what? <laughs> uh, I think, uh, oh my God, I don't know who's controlling the internet right now, but <laughs> it's all good. They want to mess up our vibe. It's all cool. It's cool. I was, can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. I was going to say, I was going to give you the last word. What, what is, what is your hope? Oh, how do we make it? Uh, out, how oh. do we? How do we make it out of all of this? According to you, mm. I feel it's just lead with love. You know, lead yourself, lead each other with love, and love is so powerful. You know, it's not what people think it is generally you know it's just so many things universal you know it's a universal kind of power you feel in yourself that l lends itself you know blooms itself into so many different things so lead with love lead with love thank you rosa for showing us the way thank you andre and everybody else who tuned in and of course love city arts it's been always a pleasure i love coming on here We're it really kind of like gives me you know yes, that's good good come back soon yes thank come you soon. come back soon and david kwang fom is over here in the comments the last comment he says i'm grateful for science this kid loves science so much he's gonna like <laughs> change the world with his musical theater science writing science um, yes everybody give it up for 